Welcome, and uh, thank you for attending today's session of Lexby's eDiscovery webinar series, Best Practices for Near Dupe, presented by Lexby Principal Gene Albert, uh, covering how you can use near duplicate detection technologies to enhance your review. Our eDiscovery webinar series uh, takes place once a month, and we cover a wide range of topics related to new litigation technologies that can help you manage increasingly large data collections. Uh, today's webinar should last about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, and we will have a uh, recording of the uh, presentation available to anyone who could not attend or could not attend the full session. To give you a brief overview of our focus here at Lexby, uh, we focus on developing and implementing technology that helps uh, legal professionals <coughs> excuse me, uh, cost effectively meet tight discovery deadlines regardless of how much data there is in your case. We offer high-speed ESI processing and conversion services uh, in addition to our award-winning cloud-based review tool, Lexby Discovery Platform. Uh, during our webinar today, if there are any questions that you have or any technical issues uh, being experienced, please email them to uh, webinars at lexby.com. Before I hand things over, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Gene. As I mentioned, Gene is a principal here at Lexby and an attorney with experience in private practice and is inside counsel. In addition, Gene has a wealth of experience leading tech and software ventures in a variety of industries. Uh, Gene's also a frequent speaker at continuing legal education conferences and summits. Uh, with that, let me turn things over to Gene uh, with uh, best practices on near -due. Thanks, Stu, <clears throat> and uh, thanks everybody for attending today. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, near-dupe uh, detection, and I think that's really an exciting technology that uh, has come out in the industry uh, recently, and we've, we've implemented, and I think it really does a lot to help uh, make for uh, better, better and faster reviews. And we'll go into an uh, overview today of how that's, uh, uh, what near-dupe ad identification is, how it works, when would it be needed? When is it helping you? Um, talk about uh, assistance with inadvertent uh, privilege release, which is a good example of it, and talk about other applications that would be um, grouping similar documents for a faster review, finding key documents when you found some and finding more like it, uh, doing a better email threading, and then we'll talk about different service options of how to implement that in your cases using uh, your software or our software. Uh, first, what is near duplicate detection? Uh, this is recognizing similar documents uh, within an eDiscovery document collection. And one thing to distinguish from is we, we have another concept that's on the slide here that's called exact duplicates. And that are, is uh, documents that are electronically exactly the same. So that would be a, a Word document that's uploaded and then uploaded again. There's no, no change on it whatsoever. If somebody opened a document and changed one letter or sometimes even opening it, it would change the document around uh, enough to where it wouldn't be an exact duplicate. So uh, our, our systems and services and software and others have ways of getting rid of those exact duplicates and that's been common for a while. The, the uh, limitation of that though is it doesn't do anything for documents that are near dupe. So you have documents that are almost exactly the same, uh, two scanned versions of a document, um, um, a document that's been uploaded and there's been a minor change to it or, or one that's even just been handled where there could be some changes on the internal metadata. Those will not no longer, those will not be exact dupes so they can't be identified and removed from a collection that way. And this is where near duplicate uh, uh, technology comes in is that is a way to find those documents that are similar and get them grouped together for a variety of purposes. And that is uh, very helpful because uh, uh, you often want to deal with those together or find more, more like them. And the uh, algorithms that do that are, you know, compare all of the text within the document with all the text and all the other documents in the collection. And this can get very processor intensive when you get into very large, large collections. So uh, historically, the, this has been pretty slow and pretty expensive, but we've done, found ways to speed it up and make it a lot cheaper. Um, this slide here shows kind of the basic idea of that, that you have these documents around that are duplicates of each other, near duplicates, but they could be in very different parts of the collection. How do you get them and get them together? The near dupe groupings will bring them together. Um, what does it do? Well, um, in getting the similar uh, documents together, It'll help in a variety of, of circumstances. Uh, one, uh, one example of it is you had separately scanned documents. Scan it once, scan it again. 
um, you know, they're they're going to they're going to they're going to be show up as near dupes at once the OCR runs on the text. Um, multiple versions of a Word document that are slightly different uh, due to uh, minor edits, reformatting, etc. So you can have versions of documents that come up that were in a collection um, merger agreement and edits, um, anything like that. They'll come up and they'll come up together as groups. Uh, you can have an original document and another version of one that has handwritten notes on it. Not exact duplicates, but they would come up together as, as group documents. Very helpful. And then the last uh, example on this slide is that um, you have emails and responses in a conversational chain or thread. With the traditional ways of threading email like you would see in a Google, that's sometimes not very helpful for litigation review because a uh, number of documents will be thrown into a chain even though they're substantively not very close to each other uh, or somebody just repeats a header or something. So it's confusing to go through. Using near dupe to do your email threading allows you to look at documents, the emails by date that are substantively uh, pretty close to each other, that they've got overlap of text of about 50% or more. And that's generally what you want to be able to look at them and, and work with them as a group for, uh, for coding and tagging and review. Uh, um, another reason, you know, why do we need near duplicate detection? Well, it's because the, the document collections just keep growing and growing and growing. So we're we're seeing more and more documents in any given case, and and um, the, the the amount of money and the amount of time to deal with the discovering these documents isn't increasing. So we've got the issue of of uh, just really litigation out of control in some of these cases of trying to handle things in a cost-effective and fast manner, and um, the technology causes by giving us computers to allow us to you know make and store all this information and the near dupe is, groupings is an example of the way technology can also save it by allowing us to do these reviews faster and better. So the main applications of near dupe are four. Um, first one is is grouping similar documents. So when a document collection comes in for review there are different ways of going through them to look at, at them to determine uh, for responsive and privileged coding or for other, other issue coding. And uh, what near dupe can do is it can allow, there will often be some fairly large groups of documents that are the same. Uh, so it identifies all the, all the near dupes and puts them in groups. So for review, you can cut off some of the time of the review by taking those groups, looking at them once, and then making a fairly quick determination of responsiveness or privilege or other issue coding. So you can quickly cut a document collection down and move through re the review of these big groups and then move on to the documents that aren't, aren't in those big groups. And that uh, can speed things up. So, uh, also related to that is it's allowing the review to be consistent. But what can happen without near dupe groupings is there can be a number of similar documents with different reviewers looking at them, or even the same person at different times, and they might be inconsistently coded. And that can um, be an issue at any time. You don't never want bad coding on a document, but that's particularly a problem with um, privileged documents where some get marked and some don't. A second great use of it is finding hidden documents or hot docs. So once you've found uh, one doc that's key to a case, and uh, at the end of the day, if a you know, case goes uh, long enough, there, there's usually a, not that many really key documents that you would take into trial. But uh, you want to make sure that you found all of them. So it, once some key documents have been found, then you can look at the near dupes to those key documents and find other ones that you may not have found in the collection and pull those up as well and, and follow the strings out on various areas of the case that are important to get the good documents. And this is a key use of um, near dupe technology. Um, third is preventing uh, inadvertent release of privileged information. Here, uh, when you're doing your privilege review and your work product review, you'll find documents and mark them. And there's a danger of not finding all of them. And this allows, uh, and what the near dupe technology does is it allows you to look at documents that you've marked as privileged or work product and also look at the ones that you have not marked that are near dupes of the ones that you have found as candidates for also being uh, marked as privileged. And it's a great technology for preventing uh, inadvertent re uh, release. 
And the last, I've uh, talked about all that already, is um, maintaining email threading in, in a more intelligent fashion than what you might otherwise see. So this report is an example of what the near do grouping would look like. Here uh, we take a demo case. This is the uh, um, Enron demo that we use uh, for testing purposes. And it identifies a number of groups within the case. Most of those are going to be fairly small, just two or three documents in it. But there will be several that have many, many documents in them that have hundreds and hundreds out of a collection. Um, and that allows one to go in and grab those groups, look at them, and then review them and tag them all at once using a, a batch or multi-doc edit capacity. So you know you can look at here potentially uh, almost 1,500, 300 documents in these large groups and might find that most of those should be coded consistently and those could be coded all at once for responsiveness, privilege, work product, issue coding. And that's a great advantage of these uh, near, near do groupings. Um, the, the next use is finding similar versions of a key document. Here we're looking at a document viewer and we have a version of a document that's up and if this was a a, uh, a key document or a hot document in the document viewer it's showing the links to uh, other uh, other versions of this document that are in the case and in the document viewer you could navigate over to those and look at those as well so you can track on out for once you found one document into other key documents in the uh, in the case uh, next we'll talk a little bit more about um, uh, inadvertent privilege release. Uh, it's, a, it's a big problem and a growing problem that um, in larger cases it puts a strain on accurate privilege review. Uh, this is generally done pretty manually. It's a very important important function on, on uh, cases where there's been a lot of attorney consultation. Uh, and what can happen is that, you know, uh, that, that your coders may find most of the versions of a privileged document but not all of them. And keyword searching on attorneys' names and, and, and um, references to privilege and attorney-client privilege are, are great, but they don't always find everything. And there are lots of cases around where people have found most of the versions of privilege documents and not all of them. And those other ones get released and sometimes they, they can't be recovered and sometimes they're, they're important information and can be um, potentially case determinative. Um, there are there are clawback agreements, and those are a good idea, of course. But um, sometimes the information can be can be gotten back. Some there can be waiver issues with those as well. Um, but um, but even if you can get the specific document back, the information that was in there has still been disclosed. And, and often there's other ways that that can be gotten to or can be used. And, and um, you know you can't unring a bell. Uh, here's an example. Um, this uh, Thorn Creek Apartments case from a couple years ago, uh, there were um, uh, six documents produced the, uh, that uh, the, the um, defendants later claimed were privileged. Uh, the, the court determined that uh, they were negligent, that the, that the defendants were, were negligent in not check, checking quickly enough uh, and finding out too late that these were available. They didn't, didn't really figure it out until they were in depositions. And simply because there had been a period of time, or a large part of it, there had been a period of time, long period of time after production and before the, the, the waiver was claimed, the, or the uh, request to get them back claimed, the court found waiver there. The um, uh, court also didn't like that the privilege log wasn't prepared quickly there, that they took a while to do that. Um, and then again, even if the court had allowed clawback here, the, you know, the sensitive information already would have been disseminated. So uh, we, we can't assume that that you're going to be automatically be able to get these back. And there's lots of examples where that doesn't happen. Um, talk a little bit about, about uh, minimizing the risk of um, privilege, inadvertent privilege release. The, um, this is often done in, in a hurry, and there's a number of reasons why this can be done poorly. Um, there's, you can certainly have uh, you know, untrained or sloppy, um, sloppy review. Um, unsearchable documents that didn't get fully OCR'd or, or were partially corrupt, um, um, search indices problem, um, poor redaction procedures, um, searching metadata, not full text, 
um, privileged text retained in, in natives uh, files that, that were uh, were released, even though they might have been redacted in, in a PDF or TIFF that went out. Um, information in load files that wasn't meant to be there. There, there's um, just a number of ways that that uh, that this can go wrong on a large rush document review and um, to get all the privileged information out of it, they really got to go right. So as you're looking at one of these things, it's important to really understand what exactly are the reviewers and the, what are the review procedures and and are are they how are they going through things and and can you can you expect them to find all this? So particularly in cases where privilege review is important, obviously that won't be that won't be a big issue in every case and uh, not not so much on the on uh, the plaintiff side, um, but but uh, you know um, com, you know specialized computerized checks such as you know exact dupe and near dupe identifications we're talking about is one of the important backups to uh, an overall good privilege review uh, process. This is a screenshot showing uh, how this this works in in action. This is a, a browse view showing a number of versions of, of dupes. That come back from a dupe group, and, and in, in this example here, uh, the nine out of ten have been marked as as uh, privileged and responsive work product, but one one was missed and was going to go out in the production. But by having this near dupe grouping, you can see where that is, and then follow up on that one and get that one properly marked and withheld as well. Here's another uh, view of how that can be done as, as a report, and th this report shows the groupings that were in the test case and then it shows which of the um, which of the groupings have inconsistent coding so here the computer has gone in and found the groupings and has found just ones that were inconsistently coded so if they were all privileged or all not privileged it doesn't come up as inconsistent but if there's some some uh, one way and some the other then that comes up as a red flag of groupings that have inconsistent coding, and then before the production goes out the door, you can go in there and look at those those uh, groupings and um, and uh, check and see that they're done done properly. This is a screenshot showing how the email threading can go. That uh, these have been grouped and they're they're sorted by date. So now you can look at uh, emails and responses, and this is a long string of fairly substantively related emails that went over time in the Enron case, and you're able to look at those all in a nice group by data order with the email threading using the near dupe technology. There's a couple ways to work with this in, um, in our software and services. One way is for clients that are using our OXP eDiscovery platform, this is built in into it. So on, on request, we'll, we'll run uh, near dupe on a case. It'll generate the groupings. And then as you're working with the case, you can pull it up in various filters and, and look at it and, and catch, catch the groups and do all the things we talked about previously in this webinar. And uh, just a little bit about the uh, Lexby eDiscovery platform in, in general. It's a full-featured uh, platform that allows for processing of documents, uh, review, pr production, timelining. Uh, it's um, uh, just some, some of the key points. It's um, self-administering, so you can do your own uploads and downloads and productions, although we have services to help as well on larger cases. You can take in natives and TIFFs. There's automatic OCR, uh, early case assessment tools. We have a dual index that uh, we think is the best in the industry that takes text both from the extracted natives and also OCR version of the document as a PDF that gives you both of those for getting better results. Um, it has a re review workflow, uh, blended productions of TIFF, uh, TIFF PDF native, um, transcript management, timelining, uh, dep uh, deposition. Uh, preparation, uh, dispositive motion assistance with uh, uh, timelines and, and issue issue tracking, and um, things like that. So that's um, overall what Lexby does. And then we have the, the uh, near dupe as, as a feature that's included with that. <clears throat> uh, for people that aren't using our our um, platform, then um, the the near dupe is also available as a separate service. And what we can do there. 
Um, this would be for people working in other review platforms or platforms that they're working in house in the law firm where they don't, uh, or a company where they, they don't want to be in a cloud based system. Then for, for those, we can take documents and, um, and um, give load file updates so you can take the, you can get the near do groupings, import them into your, your review platform or tool, however you're using those, and get those groupings and work with them just as, as a custom field within those, uh, those platforms. So we have a couple of different services on that, uh, doing load files for different types. Um, we have a native processing to TIFF, PDF, and native extraction uh, for uh, ones, and these are for different platforms that work in uh, PDF, uh, TIFF, or native for their, their, um, their ingesting of documents and review. And then we just allow that to come, come along with the near do groupings that we will prepare as, as an overlay load file. <clears throat> um, and to say just a little bit about uh, security and, and uh, data ownership uh, here, and this applies to work use in our uh, review platform or uh, for the services we run. We, 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 do, we do run in a scalable cloud environment, and uh, everything is encrypted, US-based data centers that have uh, fall best practices, have the certifications, and uh, we, we're done to buy backup and recovery. So we do everything we can to maintain the highest level of security that we're able to and uh, have everything uh, very locked down. Uh, just, just in summary, the, uh, the, the near dupe uh, we think is a, an exciting uh, technology and it, it does uh, four, four things. It allows for a, a faster, really better review by uh, grouping um, incoming documents by similarity for faster coding and also more efficient coding. The ability to find hot and key docs, so we hidden, hidden docs um, with similar content based on text can be, can be easily jumped to to follow the strings out of important documents. Uh, it's an important tool for preventing inadvertent privilege release to allow a, a backup check before the production goes out the door to make sure that all the versions of the privileged documents and work product documents have been found. And lastly, it makes for a, a really nice way to do email review to allow uh, threading of the emails that are close to each other and really ought to be grouped going together. So with that, I will uh, turn this back over to Stu. Thank you very much for uh, listening today. Well, thank you, Gene, and thank you all uh, very much for attending today's webinar. Uh, we'll hope you'll uh, join us again in the future. Uh, if any other questions come up, uh, please feel free to contact, uh, contact me at the email address you see on your screen, uh, or uh, feel free to visit us at uh, www.lexby.com. Uh, we have a resources section uh, full of articles on all sorts of e-discovery topics, uh, past webinars uh, and all sorts of other educational materials. Um, thank you very much for, for joining us and have a great day.